So guys today video like aim 300 what if Naruto x Kaneko x Sona Sateri Harem movie 1. A red haired teen lets out a groan from underneath the covers of his king size bed. The redhead teen raises his head he opens his cerulean blue eyes, the redhead has six whiskered like birthmarks giving the redhead the appearance of a yawning fox, the teenager appears to be around the age of 17 or 18 as he rises from his bed there's a Japanese tattoo of a black samurai mediating on a Chinese dragon while on his wrist he has a tattoo of koi fish, the teen has a six pack this teenager is Naruto Uzumaki a third year at Kuo Academy. While at school you had three perverts, heavenly goddesses, knight, and the mascot you have Naruto Uzumaki who can be considered most sought out guy in the school due to how handsome and how some view him as the bad boy delinquent but this is due to male population jealously of the young redhead. But Naruto could careless about his popularity with the people from his school hell the redhead child found school increasing boring you couldn't really blame him since he was so smart and he was focused on becoming a physiologist. Naruto get up breakfast is ready. Yelled a woman Naruto run his hand through his red locks. Okay ka chan. Yelled Naruto he then quickly got dressed dressing in the academy clothes except he ditched the blazer only wearing the white dress shirt, orange tie, black slacks, and some vans, Naruto comes downstairs and smiles at his mother Kashina Uzumaki. Kashina has fair skin, long red hair reaching her back, and has purple eyes, she smiles at her son morning Naruto ready for breakfast. Asked Kashina with a cheerful expression. Naruto matches her smile with his own grin you betcha I am. Said Naruto with his own smirk, after eating his breakfast he grabs his backpack see ya ka chan, said Naruto he grabs his motorcycle helmet that looks like a shark, he grabs his leather gloves, and black leather jacket that has the red ribbon symbol on the back of the jacket, Naruto walks on towards his Honda Niaoing motorcycle. It doesn't take long for Naruto to arrive at school thanks to his bike as Naruto gets off the redhead releases a groan that gave off how annoyed he is, the reason for Naruto's annoyance is the girlish screams of three perverts after being beaten savagely, Naruto shook his head at the three beaten boys idiots I swear how the fuck are they not in prison. Thought Naruto as he glares at the perverts with so much hate. Naruto has always had a great hatred for perverts I guess you can say it started when his godfather had raped Tsunade who is married to her husband Dan and after Dan had found Jiraiya rapping his wife the man had killed Jiraiya by savagely stabbing Jiraiya with a kitchen knife luckily because Dan is a politician he was able to not go to jail. Naruto then stares at the down perverts you three a fucking stupid, said Naruto as he walks around the beaten perverts not even caring. The redhead then hears a cough, Naruto turns around and sees Sona who is a young bespectacled woman in her late teens with a slim figure, black hair styled in a short bob cut and violet eyes, her body measurements are B77W57H83cm, Sona's height is 166cm, 5 feet 5 inches making her a character of average height, she mostly dressed in a Kuo Academy girls school uniform. Aren't you going to help them? Asked Sona staring at Naruto who's walking away. Naruto turned his head with an eyebrow raised why? Asked Naruto. Because they are your underclassmen, shouldn't you actually want to show them how a student should act? Asked Sona staring at the redhead. No besides I am busy Sona senpei I have class, besides should nt you worry about them perving on girls than me who actually knows how to behave, said Naruto as he stares at her violet eyes. Sona stares at Naruto with her eyes narrowing fine but please at least try to be a role model, said Sona as she leaves so, Issei isn't the only one with a sacred gear Hita has one. One that's maybe stronger than Issei's own sacred gear, said Sona. Naruto runs his hand through his hair with his eyes closed he suddenly feels as if he ran into someone help opens his eyes and sees Sarah who's in his class, Sarah has long red hair, with spiky bangs on her forehead, violet eyes, and fair skin and wears the Kuo Academy female uniform. Sarah gives Naruto a slight blow with a pink blush across her cheeks I am sorry Naruto-kun, I wasn't looking where I was going, apologize Sarah. Naruto just waved her off don't worry about, it's my fault, said Naruto now I must hurry or I am going to be late, said Naruto as he walks away while unknown to the two Rias Gremory and Akano Himejima are watching Naruto walk off to his class. As school had started Naruto just wanted it to end the redhead finds himself just staring at the wall like it's the most important thing uh, I can't wait for school to end, thought Naruto with a bored expression, unfortunately today, been one of those long days, hours later Naruto rushed or walked fast and hop on his bike. The redhead always loved riding his motorcycle to him it felt like he was free while most students don't have their license or a car Naruto had got his license at the age of 16 his cousin Nagato had bought him the bike for a present when he passed the test. 
Naruto quickly grabbed his helmet and hooped on his bike he then begins to drive out of the school parking lot. Naruto looks at his watch him. Okay I still got time good. Thought Naruto he just let out an annoying sigh uh. I just wish my teacher didn't kept talking when class was over seriously though he must be talked at least for 20 minutes. Thought Naruto he then stops when he sees a female student trip and fall he gets off his bike and notices the girl is Kaneko. He rushes over to the fallen Kaneko Miss Tezu are you okay? Asked Naruto with concern. Kaneko looks at Naruto then looks at her fallen box of chocolates my treats, said Kaneko is a stoic tone void of emotions. Naruto couldn't help but sigh man this girl must be been through a lot, thought Naruto to Zhu are you okay, repeated Kaneko she then nods her head. Kaneko grabs onto his hand and the whitenet is shocked at how smooth his hands were cocoa butter, thought Kaneko, yes I am fine, what's your name? asked Kaneko. Naruto lets go of her hand and grins at Kaneko my name is Naruto Uzumaki I am a third year, said Naruto. My name is Kaneko Tezu I am a second year Uzumaki Senpei, said Kaneko in her usual stoic tone. Naruto grins at Kaneko I would like talk to you more but I am busy but if you want to talk to me about your personal problems I am here for you, said Naruto as he puts on his helmet. Kaneko's yellow eyes gazes into Naruto's helmet I do not have any personal problems, said Kaneko. Naruto then starts his bike and drives off then why wear that mask, yelled Naruto as he drives off leaving Kaneko shocked that he was able to read her so easily. He read me, said Kaneko as she watches Naruto drives off cool bike, said Kaneko she then heads back to the occult research club. Naruto smiles as he drives through the streets that Kaneko sure has a strong grip but that girl needs some help hopefully I can help her with whatever her problem is but it all depends if she wants my help said Naruto the redhead continues to ride in motorcycle until he reaches the area where all the homeless people live but this area is where people usually commit some type of suicide. Naruto had been going to this location for two years straight help people try to cool with their problems and get them curtain medicine they need for dispersion and extreme stress which would lead to unwise choices which would lead to suicide, people around this area see Naruto as a hero since he has helped so many of them and saved so many of them, Naruto has also been studying to be a physiologist he's been studying to be one for three years. As Naruto pulls up he takes off his helmet allowing his red locks to flow freely as he walks to his usual route he sees a brunette woman who looks like a wreck Naruto smiles at the woman who's a nervous wreck hello Suzumbaki, white beetle, I see you haven't been cutting yourself, said Naruto as he barely glances at the scars that are on her arms and hands. Suzumbaki nods her head yes I have those depression pills that you gave me really worked, said Suzumbaki. I am happy to hear that if I may why are you so depressed? Asked Naruto in a curious tone and hoping to help the woman with whatever problems she's dealing with. Suzumbaki nods her head that seems fair after all you did me and if it wasn't for you ill probably be somewhere dead, I great the way to tell you why I am so depressed I supposed it has to start with my alcoholic father and my mom who was an enabler, I guess you can say my mother was jealous of me said Suzumbaki in a sad time as she rubs her arm. Naruto shoots her a raised eyebrow and narrows his eyes in suspension jealous of you. Why was your mom jealous of you? asked Naruto looking at the 39-year-old woman. Suzumbaki lets out a sigh because she thought I was more prettier than her and was trying to steal her husband who was also my dad but I think she was mentally ill. That's probably one of the reasons why she let my dad beat me and sexual harass me if that wasn't bad he would rape me and when my mom found out she would drop me off at a brothel and let all those men have their way with me. Let's not forget I was 11, this had continued until I ran away from at the age of 16 at that age I was in an abusive relationship I became a heroin and cocaine addict I also lost my unborn child when my boyfriend kicked me downstairs I was in a coma that lasted 22 hours the fall had killed my unborn child. The police had found out the real story and my boyfriend was sent to jail for 68 years in prison without bail, said Suzumbaki. Suzumbaki looks down sadly Naruto couldn't help but feel sad for her but he didn't show pity I am truly sorry you experienced this, no one should have to deal with that, said Naruto in a professional tone. Thank you Naruto I am glad I can tell someone what I experienced, you truly are a saint, said Suzumbaki as she bows to him in respect. Naruto waves her off it's no problem I am happy to help said Naruto with a smile he then watches as she leaves, Naruto continue helping multiple people just as he was about to he saw a child who appears 11 years old child holding a knife Naruto grabs onto the child's hand wow, wow what's going on? asked Naruto looking at the child. The child scoffs at Naruto why do you care? snarled the child. I care because I am about to watch a child do something he might regret, said Naruto as he stares into the child's eye as he stares into the child's eyes he could see loneliness and a look of him giving up on life. 
The child growls in annoyance why the hell should I believe you, yelled the child with rage in his eyes. The redhead lets out a soft sigh if I didn't care then why would I be here and stopping you from trying to kill yourself, said Naruto in determination. The child drops the knife and his glare vanishes he then gains a small frown do you mean it? Do you really care? Asked the boy who has black red hair. Of course I do, now what's your name lil one? Asked Naruto with concern. The child nods his head high, my name is Akaikawa, Red River, said Akaikawa. Naruto smiles down at Akaikawa seeing that the child has come down he lets go of Akaikawa's arm hello Akaikawa minds Naruto Uzumaki, so what are you doing here? Asked Naruto. Akaikawa looks down in what looks like to be shame I, I ran away from home, my 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 parents don't care about me, yelled Akaikawa with fresh tears coming down from his face. Naruto looks at Akaikawa in sadness, the redhead doesn't know how but the young Uzumaki has always been able to feel the emotional level of a person not just that he was able to analyze and scan a person it was like his brain can read a person on a physical and emotional level he wasn't just able to scan and analyze people but also objects it was like he could find the weakness in anything. Naruto then shook his head from the strange gift he has it isn't the time to zone out I must be focused on the task at hand, thought Naruto in a professional tone, Akaikawa why did you think that, that can't be truth, said Naruto as he tries to reason with the child. But they don't ever time they get home we never do anything like a family, yelled Akaikawa in a depressed tone. Can I ask you something? asked Naruto Akaikawa slowly nods his head how old are you 11, 12? asked Naruto. Akaikawa raises an eyebrow confused why Naruto wants to know his age I am 11, said Akaikawa. Naruto mentally hums to himself so Akaikawa feels like his parents are neglecting him when in reality they both have a full-time job and whatever their job is they come home late and exhausted, he most likely feels neglected for his parents not spending time with him even though they were too tired, it's simply a mindset of a child parents gone all day and not spending time with the child and said kid feeling neglected by his hard-working parents, thought Naruto. Naruto stares into the child's blue-gray eyes Akaikawa are you sure your parents don't care about you and it's not a simple misunderstanding? asked Naruto. Akaikawa then looks at Naruto with disbelief I don't know, what if they don't know want me? asked Akaikawa in a sad tone. Naruto nods his head I am sure that isn't true, have your parents ever said they don't like you or have they ever said they don't want you? asked Naruto. Akaikawa shook his head negatively no they haven't, said Akaikawa. Then they care about you and I am sure they are worried sick about you, said Naruto Akaikawa nods his head in agreement. Akaikawa smiles widely at Naruto, the redhead teen notices the smile the child has is fitting of a child, you're right Naruto thanks a lot I best get home, exclaimed Akaikawa. Naruto ruffles Akaikawa's black red yeah but I am taking you home, this isn't really a place for a child to be around, said Naruto he then grabs onto the boy's hand leading him to his Honda Niaoing motorcycle. Akaikawa looks in awe at the motorcycle that is the coolest motorcycle I've ever seen, exclaimed Akaikawa. Naruto couldn't help himself but to smirk at Akaikawa why thank you now hoop on it's getting late, said Naruto as he watches the sunset. Time skip after Akaikawa had told Naruto how to get home the boy's parents were worried sick they had thought someone had kidnapped their son but luckily that wasn't the chase after that Naruto had been the one telling Akaikawa's parents about the huge misunderstanding to say his parents were shocked were an understatement after some crying and hugging the family had thanked Naruto. But Naruto being the person he is just waved them off, who's simply happy he was able to reunite a family before something drastic could even happen. Naruto then explained why he was at that part of the town and the parents were shocked that unlike most teenagers who would spend their time hanging out with each other or do drugs and other activities but not the redhead hero, know what he does in his free time is to help people. They honestly never thought they'll meet someone so young who actually enjoys making people happy and safe, the two adults felt like they weren't even talking to a teenager, to the adults it felt like they were actually talking to another adult. Naruto looks at the clock it's getting late and I believe I overstayed my welcoming said Naruto asked her gets up from the couch. The woman shook her head nonsense Naruto-kun, you are welcome here anytime, said the woman with a bright smile. Her husband bows to Naruto you truly are a saint, said the man. Thank you. The both of you are too kind I am just doing what any person would do, but I must be going, said Naruto the two parents walk Naruto the door. The woman smiles at Naruto, see you around Naruto and God bless you, said the woman Naruto bows to them in respect her exits the house and hooping on his bike. Hum, God, I never really been the type of person who believes in something that can't be explained but supposed some people need something to believe in I on the hand is a different story, said Naruto as he drives home, but the redhead couldn't help but feel proud that he helped a family, 
while driving home Naruto finds himself home. After parking his bike he is greeted with his mother in the living room with a stern look on her face glaring at Naruto with her purple eyes, do you have any idea how late it is? You were out with a girl weren't you? I thought I told you Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze you can't date until you graduated from high school and college. I will not let some tramp ruin my boy's future. Yelled Kashina with her hair moving around making her hair look like fire. Ka Chan I wasn't with any girl I was at the library study, said Naruto. Kashina gets up from her seat and brings Naruto in a crushing hug Naruto let out a groan all right, Naruto kun I believe you, I am sorry I just don't want your future to be ruined by one of those hussies, said Kashina. Naruto smiles at Kashina yay I know Ka Chan you were just looking out for me, says Naruto. Kashina pulls away from Naruto and smiles at her son I know you must be tired how about you head to bed, said Kashina. Naruto nods his head and releases a loud yawn okay, Ka Chan night, said Naruto as he walks to his room Naruto gets out of his clothes only appearing in his boxers, the redhead lays his head down the male Uzumaki quickly falls to sleep. Next morning Naruto goes through his usual morning ritual I am out, said Naruto walking to his bike with his backpack on. Okay, said Kashina as she gets ready for work she then looks at a photo of her and a younger Naruto Minato our son is always on the move said Kashina as she wonders if her husband would be proud of how she raised her son. While Kashina was thinking about her dead husband Naruto was thinking about a certain whitenet girl not because he has feelings for her on contrary on the way to school Naruto had bumped into Kaneko who bought some snacks, Naruto couldn't help but sweat drop as Kaneko stares at her crushed and ruined candy, hey um Taju san are you okay? asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow but thanks to his helmet the petite girl was unable to see Naruto's expression. Kaneko instead stared at Naruto's helmet. Kaneko then looks back at her candy my candy, they are ruined, said Kaneko in a stoic tone. Naruto couldn't help himself but to sigh you must really love sweets? Asked Naruto Kaneko nods her head Naruto then hums to himself how about this I take you to a candy shop? I mean if we go now there's still enough time, said Naruto. Kaneko looks at Naruto with her bright yellow eyes why would you do that Naruto senpai? We don't know each other? Questioned Kaneko. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders I don't know. I guess you would look a lot happier and I enjoy making people happy, and if that's what would make you happy then so be it, plus, I know of this new candy store that you'll probably like, said Naruto. Kaneko stares at Naruto you are nice Naruto senpai, take me to the store, said Kaneko in a tone that said she was grateful for Naruto trying to buy her more sweets. Naruto nods his head he digs in his black and orange backpack and pulls out a motorcycle helmet that looks like a pre-World War II commercial leather aviator's cap and goggles. Kaneko puts on the helmet she then wraps her arms around Naruto's waist she then unconsciously snuggles against him. Kaneko lets out a peaceful sigh he feels warm, I think I can get used to this, thought Kaneko she doesn't really know why she feels at peace right now but the young devil could care less but unfortunately for her they came to a stop at a place called Rura Sweets, Kaneko looks up at Naruto is this the place? asked Kaneko. Naruto nods his head both get off of the bike the two takes off each of their motorcycle helmets as they walk in a woman in her early 30s smiles at the woman has long hair that is put in a bun, the color of her hair is a mixture of bright pink and blue purple, the woman has gray purple colored eyes, she has tan skin and she's wearing a blue one piece jumpsuit sundress this woman is Hoseki Kesho, gemstone, crystal, a person that Naruto saved who was abusing Xanax. She smiles brightly at both Naruto and Kaneko hello Naruto kun. Is this pretty lady your girlfriend? asked Hoseki, causing both of the teens to blush. Naruto shook his head negatively, No, we aren't dating. I am just treating her. Do you have any specials today? asked Naruto. Naruto senpai, I want that one, said Kaneko, pointing at a basket that's filled with various types of sweets. Hoseki lets out a joyous scream, I see she has a good eye and she's incredibly sweet, but for her to call you senpai is just the sweetest thing ever. But the way, what's your name? asked Hoseki as she grabs the basket Naruto pays her the necessary amount of money. Kaneko stares at the older woman with her usual stoic tone my name is Kaneko Tezu I will be returning here again with Naruto senpai, said Kaneko with a pink blush, she then turns towards her upperclassman come on, said Kaneko grabbing onto Naruto's hand leading the redhead towards the bike. Have a nice day you too, and Kaneko take care of Naruto kun he's a keeper, yelled Hoseki as the two get on the bike they have a crimson. She seems nice, said Kaneko, Naruto nods his yeah she is but she's a real sucker for love, if you think she was enthusiastic just wait for Valentine's Day, joked Naruto. 
With Kaneko behind Naruto he misses Kaneko smile the two then rode into school everyone was surprised beyond belief Kaneko the school mascot and Naruto the school's heartthrob riding to school but out of everyone Rias and Akano were the ones truly shocked due to Kaneko being so distant at times the two devils couldn't help but wonder what Naruto did to heart it up to the somewhat cold Nako devil. But you could also hear the cries from the perverted trio as they watch Kaneko who each find incredibly hot is not only riding on someone's motorcycle but she's riding with Naruto someone who all males are jealous of. Damn you Uzumaki! Yelled a male student crying at the fact that Naruto is with Kuo's cutest girl. Oh my god! Was that Kaneko-chan with Naruto-sama? Yelled a female student. I wonder why are those two hanging out this morning? Pondered Sona. Rias turns to her best friend Akano Akano was that Kaneko Chan with Naruto Uzumaki? asked Rias with dumbfounded expression. Akano rubs her eyes in disbelief as she saw the rook of their peerage driving to school with Naruto who never really interacts with anyone I believe it was Rias Bucko but I still can't believe it, said Akano in shock. Rias narrows her green colored eyes I wonder why are those two hanging around, said Rias in curiosity Akano couldn't help but to wonder the same thing. While both Rias and Akano wonder why Kaneko and Naruto went to school together, Naruto and Kaneko parked in the student parking and took off each of their helmets. Kaneko gives Naruto back to him this morning was fun, said Kaneko with a smile. Naruto smiles at Kaneko yeah it was I had, said Naruto with a grin. Kaneko then stares at his whiskers Naruto senpei can we hang out again? asked Kaneko with a blush. Naruto who also has a blush as he looks at the cute petite devil ill like that Kaneko. How about I walk you to class? asked Naruto. Kaneko nods her head okay Naruto senpei, said Kaneko as she eats a peanut butter cup that's the size of a baseball Naruto couldn't help but to chuckle at Kaneko. Akano rubs her eyes in disbelief as she saw the rook of their peerage driving to school with Naruto who never really interacts with anyone I believe it was Rias Bucko but I still can't believe it, said Akano in shock. Rias narrows her green colored eyes I wonder why are those two hanging around? said Rias in curiosity Akano couldn't help but to wonder the same thing. While both Rias and Akano wonder why Kaneko and Naruto went to school together, Naruto and Kaneko parked in the student parking and took off each of their helmets, Kaneko gives Naruto back to him this morning was fun, said Kaneko with a smile. Naruto smiles at Kaneko yeah it was I had, said Naruto with a grin. Kaneko then stares at his whiskers Naruto senpei can we hang out again? asked Kaneko with a blush. Naruto who also has a blush as he looks at the cute petite devil ill like that Kaneko, how about I walk you to class? asked Naruto. Kaneko nods her head okay Naruto senpei, said Kaneko as she eats a peanut butter cup that's the size of a baseball Naruto couldn't help but to chuckle at Kaneko. Recap end as Kaneko eats the chocolate she finds herself shocked not at the giant treat in her hands but the fact that she had opened up towards Naruto she might have opened up a little but she found herself wanting to be close she knew he was human but she sensed something else in him she knew it wasn't his unknown sacred gear if that was the case she would find herself talking with a pervert Issei. She might not know what it is but all the Nako knows is she wants to get to know him but it also has to do with how kind Naruto is which is a reliever since most people at the school only see her as the school mascot but it seems like Naruto doesn't. It almost feels like he doesn't care about titles and he gave me these sweets, thought Kaneko with a small. Naruto glances down at Kaneko so she does smile, said Naruto as he puts his hands in his pocket. Kaneko turns her head in the opposite direction of Naruto not allowing the redhead Uzumaki to see her pouting shut up Naruto senpei, grumbled Kaneko and crosses her arms while this is happening Sona, Akano, and Rias watch in shock. Akano blinks her eyes in amazement as she sees Naruto Uzumaki and Kaneko walking together well, I didn't expect this, you could have guessed our very own Kaneko would not only be seen with Naruto but it having fun, amusing isn't it Rias Bucko, smiled Akano. Rias narrows her eyes at Akano amusing no, interesting yes I just wonder what Naruto-san did to catch Kaneko attention, after all, the two have never really talked the only person who Naruto-san has actually talked to before was Sons, said Rias as she watches the two with a careful eye. Sleep snickers at Rias causing the red-headed devil to turn to her fellow devil Fufufu, it is amusing is it not Rias Bucko, said Akano with an amused expression. This statement had caused the busty redhead to shot her best friend an excusing look what are you talking about Akano? questioned Rias. Even though this sounded like an order from her queen Akano just gives her friend an amusing smile ah, Rias Bucko is so clueless how cute. Kaneko Chan isolates herself from anyone but us while Naruto kun isolates himself from everyone well except for Sona sama but she always talks to him, it's a true mystery is it not? asked Akano in charming tone fitting someone of her beauty. 
Rias narrows her eyes at the retreating blonde and white Annette. Maybe we can use this to our advantage, pondered Rias. Akano snickers at Rias Fufu, how devious of Rias Bucko, joked Akano. I am a devil, whispered Rias in a hushed tone. Even with the serious tone her king has on her face, the Ravenette still gains a mischievous grin, or is it that Rias Bucko wants Uzumaki kun, even though you already have your eyes set on Hyodo san, snickered Akano. Rias gained deadpan expression. It isn't like that Akano chan, and you know it said Rias but both devils knew they wanted the handsome redhead but they just have to wait for the right time. Rias then gained a distant expression I really do hope one of those two can help me with my problem, thought Rias. With Naruto and Kaneko after Naruto watched Kaneko literary eat a sweet that's the size of a baseball had made Naruto wondering where does the petite white in it put it all especially since he's now watching her eat a very large payday bar that requires her to use both hands, the red-haired teen raises his eyebrow at her errant you full asked a curious Naruto who's also wondering where does she put it all. Kaneko's yellow orbs meet Naruto's ocean blue orbs the first year almost felt herself being drawn to them which nearly caused her to blush in embarrassment since she realized she was staring, it's good, said Kaneko in her stoic expression. Naruto smirked at the first year with Kaneko focus on the large candy she didn't even notice the fox-like grin from the Uzumaki. Kaneko then turns towards Naruto with her eyes full with concern and wondering why are you welcome Jimmy to class Naruto senpei asked Kaneko looking up at Naruto with her gaze. Ah, stated a female student as she watches the adorable first year and third year. They're so cute, exclaimed a fangirl, is that Kaneko and Naruto? Asked Tomo who's shocked at seeing the two walking together. Her friend Rea blinks her eyes just to make sure she's actually seeing the white Annette and redhead walking together I don't believe it, stated a dumbfounded Rea. She's so adorable, exclaimed a female, damn you Uzumaki. Don't defile Kaneko chan, roared a fanboy who's glaring daggers at Naruto. Damn that pretty boy, grumbled a pervert who's wearing glasses. Curse you Uzumaki, howled a male student in jealousy. Both Naruto and Kaneko would have walked past the fangirls and fanboys but they were stopped but Sona who raised her glasses giving the two a stern and strict stare I see you were walking to Ju san to class Naruto san how kind of you Naruto san, said Sona. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders in a nonchalant manner it seemed like the right thing to do, besides, if I hadn't my ka chan would probably punish me for not being a gentleman, said Naruto. Sona nods her head in agreement while both third years were talking Kaneko glares at Sona or more precisely at her breast, while they weren't as big as Rias Bucko or Kano Senpei, the young Nako can't help to feel jealousy since most women she has been around always had huge breasts and her being cursed with flat chest. Kaneko turned towards Naruto and turns to Sun's she then notices Naruto never even looked at Sona's breast. She had seen Sun and Naruto talking and she had never seen him staring at her breast actually all the times she had passed by him she had never really seen him staring at any girl's breast or bottom like almost all of THR guys at Kuo except for Kiba. Kaneko then narrows her eyes at Naruto she felt a stranger energy coming off of him not devil, yukai, angel, or fallen angel energy at least he's not a pervert. I hate perverts, thought Kaneko as she thinks of the perverted trio. While Sona continues her conversion with Naruto about acting like a respectable young man her thoughts are on something else. More precise about the energy she feels around him and his mysterious sacred gear I wonder what sacred gear it is, whatever, sacred gear he has will no doubt attract the attention of the fallen angels, even though Rias and I both need a powerful member to our peerage we can't help but feel bad about allowing such an innocent life as Naruto to be killed thought Sona as she stares at the male redhead. Even with her own inner thoughts she still has her stern and serious expression Uzumaki-san maybe you can show Hyodo-san, Matsuda-san, and Motohama-san how to behave like honorable students of Kuo? asked Sona. Naruto just shook his head negatively no, I don't think so, said Naruto without a second thought as he waves his hand in the air. This response had caused both Kaneko and Sons to raise an eyebrow at Naruto and why wouldn't you Uzumaki-san? asked Sona in a curious tone. Naruto releases a sigh of tiredness come on Sona senpei you're an intelligent woman, if I did even explain how a male student is supposed to act it'll just come out one ear and out the other, the only thing those idiots care about is peeping on woman and stupid porn, said Naruto with a growled Sona could only sweat drop at his hatred for pervert trio's perverted nature. Kaneko nods her head in agreement believing what he's saying is true she also like how he insulted each of those perverts but she can also sense a deep hatred when he spoke about the perverts stupid perverts, said Kaneko Shed also wondered what had caused this certain rage of perverts she of course knew it was not her place to question him since it was his business and she did not know the redhead well enough to ask him. 
The young Sidir lets out a soft sigh just like Kaneko she has no idea what has caused his deep hatred for perverts she of course had asked him but the Uzumaki would change the subject or just ignore her question I really wish you would reconsider Uzumaki Senpei, stated Sona. Naruto just crosses his arms and gains a serious expression well, I don't plan to ever talk to those idiots besides why have you really talked to me this morning I doubt it's about having those little perverts act right or Kaneko san and myself arriving at school together, stated Naruto. He read you, stated Kaneko in her stoicism tone. Sona glances at Kaneko she then turned her attention towards Naruto you are correct Uzumaki san I confronted you about something as I am hoping you will agree, said Sona with a tone of high statue fitting someone who has their leadership. He raised a delegated eyebrow at the ravenette well, it depends what it is Sona senpei, yakno I want just agree blindly right? asked Naruto as he places his hand on his hip. The sitier devil nods her head in agreement yes I am aware Uzumaki san, said Sona. So, what do you want to ask? questioned Naruto as he stares at the sitier. I want to know if you would join the student council there's opening for our treasurer and I was hoping you would join the student council Uzumaki senpei? asked Sons. Naruto's stare became hard and no I am busy, said Naruto shocking both Kaneko and Sona. Busy with what Naruto senpei? asked a curious Kaneko whose look up at Naruto with wonder. Sona also nods her head in agreement I would also like to know why too, questioned Sona. I am just too busy to actually do that kind of things joining a club or school council isn't something I would find interesting, now if you excuse me I have to walk Kaneko to her class and get to my own we're having a test today and I'd rather not be late, said Naruto he and Kaneko walks right past her but as the two walk past sons Kaneko gives Sona a slight bow in respect at which she nods her head at the widenet. Sona then narrows her eyes as she sees a strange aurora surrounding Naruto I must be prepared for when the fallen angels begin to make their move on Uzumaki san and Hyoto san, but knowing the fallen angels they'll mostly make their move soon, thought Sona. As Sona makes her way to her own class Naruto turned towards Kaneko who has not stopped staring at him I like your bike, it's dope, stated Kaneko who gives the redhead a thumbs up, Naruto didn't know how but somehow even with her stoic expression the petite teen still looked cute. But Naruto just gives the widenet a small smile so, Kaneko what do you like to do? asked Naruto who's curious about the small widenet. Kaneko glances at his whiskered birthmarks kitty, thought Kaneko as she imagines a blonde feline, I like sweets Uzumaki senpei, stated Kaneko with a tone of pride. He lets out a small chuckle Kaneko puffs out her cheeks believing Naruto is making fun of her ihihi, Kaneko san don't be like besides I already know you love sweets is there anything else you like? Like something you enjoy doing? asked Naruto. The Whitenet stops puffing out her cheeks this action had caused a few squeals from the females and cursing from the men yelling about their lolicon but both had obviously ignored the fangirls and lolicons, she then points at Naruto he just stared at her with a raised eyebrow Uzumaki senpei go first, declared Kaneko but to everyone else of hearing distance it sounds more of an order. Sure. Okay. I like the color orange, I like reading books, I enjoy anime, I like J-pop, I enjoy riding my bike, I also enjoy playing games, I like to play shogi, and I love ramen, so, what about you Kaneko san? asked Naruto with his voice laced in curiosity. I like cats, my friends, tea, walking around, I like mochi, I like ice cream, and rap, said Kaneko. Really? You like rap? asked Naruto finding it hard that out of all the things she likes is rap. Kaneko nods her head yes, I love rap, I love Keith Ape, Rich Chiga, Kyle, Yeji, XXX Tentacion, and Kendrick Thayer Dope Uzumaki san, said Kaneko with a raised thumb. Ah ha ha. I bet I have listened to Yeji, she's pretty awesome. Also, she's electronic, not rap, said Naruto with a half grin. Kaneko then grabs onto Naruto's sleeve, stupid senpei, pout Kaneko. Ah. Don't pout Kaneko, how about tomorrow I take you to this other candy store I know, said Naruto. And just like a switch her pace slowed down at the sound of candy shop while still walking she turned her head towards the redhead and her yellow orb eyes gazing into his own you will? asked Kaneko. He nods his head yeah of course, I take it this is your class? asked Naruto who stopped in front of a classroom. She nods her head and lets go of his sleeve what is the name of the candy shop and what time? asked Kaneko. Naruto could have sworn he saw a thinkle in her eye the store is called Magma's Fantasy and let's meet at that burger place at 12.30 is that good with you? asked Naruto she nods alright see you later, said Naruto. Bye senpei, said Kaneko as she enters the classwork, while she enters her class Naruto sighs to himself and runs his hand through his crimson locks okay why the hell did I just agree to take her out, 
there was no reason for me to agree and no I have to take out I of course could not go at all but that seems like an asshole move, oh, well at least tomorrow is a weekend, thought Naruto as he makes his way down the halls ignoring the females checking him out. Time skip later that day Naruto is sitting into his science class ready to take his test, Naruto honestly just wanted the day to be over mostly because he's annoyed with all the states he has gotten thanks to him and Kaneko arriving at school and walking together at school but now he's waiting to take the test and leave. Someone then enters a classroom this person is a woman who appears to be in her late twenties, she then smiles at them nearly causing a few females to be jealous at the busty woman and the rest of the men gain a heartstruck expression hello, my name is Hajiri Kanata, Miss Kobayashi is not going to be here for a while due to an accident so I'll be filling in for her for the time being, so for the time being you may call me Hajiri Sensei, said Hajiri with a bright smile. Hajiri is a tall and buxom woman with long, navy blue hair that obscured her right eye. She also keeps her hair in a ponytail, and has brown eyes, she usually wears a white v-neck shirt with a wide collar that reveals some of her cleavage, a dark skirt, underneath her skirt she wears black panty holes, and wears black high heels. Hajiri then sits down in the death behind her desk this had caused her massive breast to bounce causing nearly all the boys in the class to have a nosebleed except for Naruto ok Kobayashi sensei had said you had a test just because I am here doesn't mean we aren't going to have a test said Hajiri she ignores each of the groans from the students. Right after everyone everyone intrudes themselves to Hariji sensei they had gotten their test they began but for Naruto this test felt like it was long, the test wasn't really hard for him mostly because he had studied his ass off plus it helps wit having a mother like Kashina making him study in his free time, I just want to hurry and finish this test already, thought Naruto who has a bored expression on his face as he stares down at the paper. Killer her ordered a evil ominous voice Naruto turns left and right searching for the sound but couldn't find anything. Upon seeing Naruto look around had caused to be stared at Hajiri sensei is there something wrong Uzumaki san? asked Hajiri with the tilt of the head you could hear a young teen being flung from his desk who obviously had a serious nosebleed. Naruto turned to the woman and shook his head negatively no, I thought drop something Hariji sensei stated Naruto Hariji sensei nods in acceptance of his lie which wasn't a total lie since he did drop his pencil, as Naruto looks down at his paper he can't help but to wonder who spoke just now the voice didn't sound familiar it felt voidless but he chalks it up to hearing things. But before he knew it he was finished with the test already walking down the hall minding his own business ignoring the glare's male students he honestly can't wait till he graduates and doesn't have to deal with the immature males at Kuo'a. Hopefully when I go to college I won't have to deal with these idiots, for some reason I just can't forget that voice I wonder what the hell that has that voice doesn't sound familiar there's no way in hell that voice in class belong to anyone in class, thought Naruto. I can't believe Issei has a girlfriend, said Matsuda with his voice laced with jealously. Motohama nods his head in agreement I know right did you see the size of her titties, roared Motohama who has a nosebleed as he imagines himself grabbing some breast. Naruto walks past the two prevents with an annoyed expression seriously, how the hell are those two or that other idiot not in jail, thought Naruto he then came to a stop when felt something crashed into himself he looks down and see Akano rubbing her head. Naruto extends his hand out Akano grabs hold of his hand allowing him to pull her up my bad I wasn't looking where I was going um, said Naruto. Akano blush in embracement as she hadn't introduced herself usually everyone knows who she is but it seems like the young Uzumaki doesn't hello. My name is Akano Himejima a third year, said Akano with a beautiful smile. Naruto nods his head I am Naruto Uzumaki I am a third year I must be going I am in a rush Akano-san, said Naruto as he begins to speed walk towards the student parking a lot, Naruto was even able to miss the ravenette charming smile. He's quite handsome up close I must tell Rias chan the job was a success, I can see why nearly all the girls talk about him he's a looker, thought Akano with a pleasant smile. With Sona within the student council office Sona can be seen staring at her best friend Rias Gremory who has a smile on her face this had caused Sona to raise an eyebrow at the red-haired female you've made contact with Uzumaki-san haven't you? Stated Sona both turned to see Akano walking in the room. Rias tips some of her tea and nods her head yes, I did I knew I couldn't use the same method on Naruto-san like with Issei, said Rias with a proud smile on Jir face almost like she had won a prize. Sona then turned towards Subaki. She is a young bespectacled woman with long straight black hair that extends all the way down to her knees, with split bangs and heterochromic eyes, with a violet left eye and a light brown right eye, in addition to wearing the Kuo Academy girls school uniform, she also wears blue, semi-rimmed glasses with square lenses. Subaki how is everything? asked asked sons as she glances towards her fellow ravenette. The glasses wearing devil turn towards Sona it is going as you planned, 
All that is needed to wait Sona Bucko, said Tsubaki with a respectable bow she then refills both of Rias and Sona's cups. Era, era, era how devilish of two both plan to claim their prize once the chance is right, joked a kenk thus making Rias have a slight blush across her cheeks. Sona sips her tea Akano san we are devils both Rias and myself are heir to the Sitir and Gremory household as such we have a responsible to show we have owned our rightful place as heirs of our own family, said Sona in a lecture tone. Sona is right Akano chan plus you should know as a devil we have our own selfish desire, anyways, Akano san did you do what I asked? asked Rias who has a curious expression on her beautiful face. Akano bows to her king yes it is down Rias bucko. I placed a summon IMG paper into his coat and he he didn't accept a thing, what about you Sona Sama how did you give Issei the contract? asked Akano. Simple I used my familiar he should be back any minute, said Sona. Era, era, I wonder what their reaction will be when they become a devil, said Akano with a blush on her face. Tsubaki just shakes her head negatively at her fellow queen, you sound like a succubus Akano san, said Tsubaki she sometimes wonder if Akano is actually was the incarnation of lust lust even though Akano was a virgin she still acted like the goddess of lust, even with Akano's quirks she accepted Akano for all her weird quirks. Akano looks at Tsubaki with her head tilted to the side, she then placed a finger on her chin thus giving the busty Akano a thinking pose but I am a devil, said Akano in a fake clueless tone, but before Tsubaki can even react at Akano the summoning seal appears Sona smiles at the sight of her Fenrir familiar. Her familiar is named Sanriku, Sun Lake, Sanriku is a huge wolf wolf from Norse mythology who is usual the height height of at least 15 feet tall the mythical creature also has an ability to alter its size. Sanriku has snow white fur, black eyes with gold pupils and he has two blue markings on each side of his face below his eyes which resemble horizontal scars, Sanriku now appears to be the size of a full grown bulldog the canine creature goes to Sona and licks her hand she scratches behind his ear have you completed your job Sanriku? Asks Sona Sanriku nods his head. Rias smiles at the familiar and turned towards Sona and grins at her best friend so that's how you gave Issei the contract, stated Rias. Sona nods her head yes it is I assume it's only a matter of time for that woman to make her move, said Sona with a stoic expression she then gazes at the small stack of paperwork on her desk. Akano smiles at Sona era, 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 it seems like Issei will cause a problem, chuckled Akano. All the other female shot her a questionable gaze care to explain what you mean by that? asked Tsubaki as she narrows her eyes at Akano. The busty ravenette simply shrug her shoulders causing her huge breast to bounce really Tsubaki Chan you don't know why. Well to put it simply Issei is the type of person who always gets in trouble with or willing or not the boy always finds himself in some type of trouble I mean the fallen angels have only just arrived a few weeks ago and they already attempting to kill Issei but with Naruto they haven't even came in contact with them but this could be since he doesn't talk to anyone or doesn't try to start a form of relationship with anyone in Kuo. Said Akano Rias, Tsubaki, and Sona found themselves agreeing with Akano they all knew Naruto was quite handsome and the only male in Kuo who wasn't a pervert besides Kiba. Even with his looks the male redhead was somehow antisocial and still popular with a few of the females. Sona then turns towards Rias I am actually curious about their sarst gear, said Sona, Rias always agrees with Sona she also wondered what sarst gear the two have she knew the two both had a strong sarst the only problem was neither of the two women know which it was. Time skip. Nighttime Naruto threw off his shirt and fell into the bed groaning from the long day he honestly felt extremely exhausted physically. Mentally, and spirituality. Luckily he was greeted with his mom who had made miso ramen. But not only was school exhausted but going down to his usual spot was exhausted usual helping those people never left him dead exhausted but he was happy he was able to help this woman from committing suicide. Naruto actually felt sorry for her poor woman to be used as a means for money, it's hard to imagine parents would sell their daughter out like a prostituate just for money I guess it shows how cruel people can be, thought Naruto he then feels his eyes becoming heavy. With tiredness being too much he closes his eyes falling asleep, Naruto is then greeted to a dark void of nothingless usually this would confuse him but Naruto understood sometimes your mind strange bizarre dreams, wahaha, this is no dream boy, roared a evil voice. Naruto looks around the dark space who's there, demanded Naruto narrowing his eyes. Naruto didn't know why but somehow he knew the mysterious figure was grinning don't worry my user you will soon find out, said the dark voice. Naruto can't help but to sigh damn my mind is weird, commented Naruto with a sweat drop. I told you boy I am not a figment of your imagination, roared the dark voice. Naruto jumps back in fright then who the hell are you yak now? asked Naruto. 
I can't answer that because you are still not ready but beware those with the black wings, commanded the voice, the next morning Naruto woke up rubbing the sleep from his eyes. He then released a loud yawn making him look like a foxman what a strange dream, exclaimed Naruto he then lays back in his bed and putting his headphones in his ears listening to Pretty Reckless. Soon young Gorgon you will understand, said the dark voice. Naruto threw off his shirt and fell into the bed groaning from the long day he honestly felt extremely exhausted physically. Mentally, and spirituality, luckily he was greeted with his mom who had made miso ramen. But not only was school exhausted but going down to his usual spot was exhausted usual helping those people never left him dead exhausted but he was happy he was able to help this woman from committing suicide. Naruto actually felt sorry for her poor woman to be used as a means for money. It's hard to imagine parents would sell their daughter out like a prostitute just for money I guess it shows how cruel people can be, thought Naruto he then feels his eyes becoming heavy. With tiredness being too much he closes his eyes falling asleep, Naruto is then greeted to a dark void of nothingless usually this would confuse him but Naruto understood sometimes your mind strange bizarre dreams, wahaha, this is no dream boy, roared a evil voice. Naruto looks around the dark space who's there, demanded Naruto narrowing his eyes. Naruto didn't know why but somehow he knew the mysterious figure was grinning don't worry my user you will soon find out, said the dark voice. Naruto can't help but to sigh damn my mind is weird, commented Naruto with a sweat drop. I told you boy I am not a figment of your imagination, roared the dark voice. Naruto jumps back in fright then who the hell are you yak now? asked Naruto. I can't answer that because you are still not ready but beware those with the black wings, commanded the voice, the next morning Naruto woke up rubbing the sleep from his eyes. He then released a loud yawn making him look like a foxman what a strange dream, exclaimed Naruto he then lays back in his bed and putting his headphones in his ears listening to Pretty Reckless. Soon young Gorgon you will understand, said the dark voice. Recap end he didn't know what had caused him to have such a strange dream sure he has some strange dreams especially when he was in grade school he had a dreamed about world war 3 he even had a zombie apocalypse dream but nothing like the one he had last night felt to real so vivid he then run his hand through his crimson locks well whatever i still have time before i have to meet with kaniko but i honestly can't believe i am taking her out if ka chan found out shell kill me well at least it's the weekend thought naruto he then grabs his head in frustration as he sees something something ancient something dark uh what the hell Groaned Naruto in annoyance for the young Uzumaki it was too early for him to dealing with headaches while he had no problems with waking up in the morning had rather not have a headache or anything ruin his morning, he then grabs his phone and plugs in his headphones and plays XXXTentacion King of the Dead I am hungry probably should get something to eat, said Naruto he starches his stomach and sees his mother already in the kitchen. He smiles at his mother he then takes out headphones and grins at her who shoots her a thousand watt smile hey Naruto you slept good asked Kashina who's standing in front of the stove cooking scramble eggs. Naruto shrugged his shoulders he grabs a glass and pours himself a cup full of orange juice I guess I just had this weird dream, said Naruto he takes a sip and turns the television on as soon as the television came on he saw it was the news and quickly changed it to freaks and greeks he wasn't a fan of the news mostly because all the news that comes on is always about someone being killed, robbed, or sued. And the news just wasn't his scene but he doesn't really watch TV due to him always being outside but he was happy that he didn't have school mostly due to him finding the people at his school increasingly annoying especially the perverted three had heard that Issei somehow got a girlfriend he couldn't careless because it wasn't really his business and had figured the girl would dump him as soon as she finds out what kind of person he is but if she doesn't then all good for her. Kashina flashed Naruto a curious expression was it the one with the zombies or clones? Asked Kashina who remembered all the times where Sun would tell her of his bizarre dreams she was honestly impressed with how much he remembers and wrote his imagination even when he was a child had had a wild imagination but she can't help but wondered if Naruto had another strange dream. Naruto shook his head negatively no, just some weird dream about some deep voice, it was really weird, said Naruto who glances back at his mother. Kashina nods her head you're right that sounds sound weird, do you want bacon? Asked Kashina Naruto nods his head you know Tsunade has been asking about you? Asked Kashina. Naruto blinks at her in confusion really. What about? Asked Naruto wondering what his godmother wanted from him. Nothing really just wondering when you're coming over, she misses you yak now said Kashina the red haired woman then flips the eggs to the other side seeing they are fully cooked she sets the eggs on a huge plate and puts the pan in the sink. Naruto runs his hand through his hair oh, 
I guess it slipped my mind I am so busy with school but it'll be fun seeing Tsunade Bachan and Dan Jisan again maybe I'll visit them this week or something, said Naruto he had honestly forgot about visiting his godmother he didn't mean to it had just slipped his mind mind due to school, meeting Kaneko, and him helping other people and now that strange dream. Kashina smiles brightly at her son sure raising him after Minato was hard but she knew her son would grow to be a great man like her husband but she still wished the man was still alive while Tsunade. Dan. Their daughter Skunami. Nawaki were there for her and Naruto she feels like he needed a father figure and Dan is old enough to be Naruto's grandfather and Nawaki is more of a brother figure to her son but she was still happy with her son, I am sure they would like that very much and you know how much Skunami looks up to you, states Kashina she then takes a bite of her bacon. Naruto chuckles at Kashina his mother always seemed so energetic and full of life he can't help but wonder if his mom has always been like this or was it after she had met his father he then grabs his head pain as if something is banging within his skull his eyes widened as he sees a demonic Roman goth looking helmet glaring into his soul but suddenly the strange image vanished Naruto are you okay? asked Kashina staring at her child with concern and worried. Huh? replied Naruto. I said are you okay? repeated a worried Kashina she then placed her palm on his head she then has a small smile it doesn't seem like you're sick are you feeling okay? asked Kashina in a worried tone she then got up and poured him some juice at which he drank within a matter of seconds did you get a headache? asked Kashina. Naruto slowly nods his head running his hand through his red locks yeah. I think I was just feeling a little dizzy, said Naruto flashing his mother a assuring smile but the thing was that it didn't feel like a headache he was sure headaches aren't supposed to feel like your head was being ripped from the outside and inside and he was pretty sure if he told her about the dream she would think there's something seriously and mentally wrong with so he would deal with this alone. Hell I am not even sure what the dream was but whatever, it's a dream, thought Naruto who begins to eat the breakfast while staring at the television an old movie was playing the warrior priestess and his favorite actress Koyuki Kazahana was in it. Kashina turned towards Naruto with a half grin at which Naruto raised an eyebrow at her haven't you seen this movie like over a hundred times? Joked Kashina she can still remember when she and Minato took Naruto to see one of Koyuki's movie for the first he was so amazed and dazzled at the movie he also acted the same when he saw Jurassic Park and Spider-Man for the first time even sometimes when we would see those big budget movies he would stare in amazement. She watches as Naruto takes a bite of his sausage yak now I can say for you Ka-chan, I mean how many times have you seen Pan? asked Naruto. Kashina in response puffed out her cheeks it's a classic, databane, exclaimed Kashina. Naruto grins widely at Kashina who accidentally used her tick yeah, I know so is warrior priestess, so we're even, said Naruto he then eats the rest of his eggs he then takes it to the kitchen and begins to wash it. Kashina hands the plate to her son who begins to wash the dishes she then turned towards Naruto so, what do you plan to do today anything special? asked a curious Kashina. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders I think I'll go to the library there's a book I want to check out. Lied Naruto he knew if she found out he not only lied to her but is also spending his time with a female. He knew she didn't want him dating until he was finished with college he wasn't even really sure why he even agreed to take her to that candy candy shop he also wasn't an idiot he was fully aware of he had asked Kaneko to Zhu on a date. Hell he barely knew the white net he could always cancelled it but that would be a dick move nothing I can do about it now thought Naruto he couldn't really do anything about it he doesn't even know out of all the girls he asked Kaneko the only other girl he actually talks to who doesn't fawn over him is Sona Shitori who's someone who he knows for two years but he doubts she would consider dating hell he himself didn't think hell asked someone out. After he washed and put away all of the dishes the red haired then took a shower but while he was in the shower his mind was plagued with the strange voice he heard it was so foreign and the voice didn't sound like it could be friendly it exactly sounded like it wished to kill someone but for some odd reason he doesn't feel threatened probably because it was my own damn mind. Whispered Naruto as he exits out of the shower he gets dressed instead of wearing his school uniform he decided to wear a black shirt over it he wore a monstar jersey, he also can be seen wearing camo jeans, and black nikes the shoelaces of the show are a dark blue color. He grabs phone, wallet, headphones, helmet, and keys to his Honda Niaoing motorcycle. Naruto can be seen walking down the stairs by Ka Chan. I'll see you later, said Naruto Kashina waves back. At him he then hops onto his motorcycle with Bluetooth on he plays capital Steez. Apex he smiles as the wind blows in his face no matter how many times he always enjoyed the feeling he was also sure many other bikers enjoyed it to plus he was sure no one has a bike quite like this he remembers when he fought got the bike he pretended like he was ghost rider but he obviously wasn't doing any of the crazy tricks mostly because that was absolutely insane to ever attempt to ever do. The red haired teen sees that he comes to a stop light. 
He then feels as if he's being watched he turned his head and sees three kids gawking in awe at his motorcycle he wasn't really surprised by that after all most people stare at his bike as if it was made from the dreams itself at which it pretty much is and luckily he got his license when he was 16 years so old and he doesn't have to rely on anyone to take him and he doesn't need to take a bus with it's him driving he can leave when he wants and doesn't have to wait. With the light turning green drives off in a matter of minutes he sees Queen Burger the place where he will meet the petite whiteinette and it wasn't that hard to find her he sees her standing outside petting a cat. Kaneko can be seen wearing a light blue shirt, back leggings over them she wears blue jean shorts, and a pair of black shoes, at the sound of the motorcycle Kaneko turned her head and sees Naruto been waiting long Kaneko? Asked Naruto he watches as she shook her head negatively. She looks down at his motorcycle admiring it she also noticed the music that is being played Rich Chiga is dope. Said Kaneko who gives Naruto a thumbs up Naruto in response laughs causing her to pout and punch him in the arm and Naruto found himself surprised by the strength used by her she then extends her arms out let's go. Said Kaneko Naruto hands her a helmet at which she puts it on and hops on the bike she then wrapped her arms around Naruto and snuggles into his back he's so warm. Thought Kaneko Naruto ignored her snuggling up to him and begins to drive off heading towards Magma's fantasy and Kaneko is giddy with excitement the only thing she loves more than rap music and candy is her family but if the food at Magma's fantasy is as good as her senpei says if the bee shell gladly sell the souls of her friends just to see if it lives to the hype she then stares at his hair it wasn't as luscious as Rios red hair but his hair has its very own shine Naruto senpei, said Kaneko. In response he hums yeah, is something up? Asked Naruto is curious. I was wondering why did you ask me to come with you and why not Sona Senpei? You two seem to know each other? Asked Kaneko. Naruto couldn't help to gain a sweat drop on the side of his head honestly I have no deal, I actually asked myself that this morning but, I couldn't of why I asked you, why would you rather I bring Sona instead? Asked Naruto. No, I want to go, said Kaneko in a flat tone she wasn't even sure why Shed agreed to go with Naruto she knew it wasn't just to try out the new candy shop okay that was a lie but there was another reason why she had agreed and she was unsure what the reason might be she knew that Rias had told her and the rest of the peerage about Naruto having a sacred gear but him having a sacred gear would lead herself to accepting his invitation at best she was curious about him. She found him quite interesting far more interesting than anyone at school mostly because at school only see her as the school's mascot and don't even bother to get to know who she is except for her friends and Sona's peerage and Naruto was the only one who didn't call her by her school life title instead he treated her like an average person usually such things wouldn't really concern her but for some reason him treating her as a normal person had made her feel warm. Kaneko then smiles as the wind blows through her face this is nice thought Kaneko she then looked at his jersey and it looked similar a smile traveled on her face as she recognized the it that's from Space Jam isn't it, Naruto Senpei? asked Kaneko. Naruto nods his head with a smile yeah it is, it's cool you recognize this jersey, said Naruto. The comment caused Kaneko to blush it's a classic, said Kaneko. Naruto nods his head in agreement it sure is, I also have a Toon Squad jersey, a like Mike jersey yak now the good one with bow wow not the other one and an airbud one, said Naruto. I didn't know they had an airbud jersey, said Kaneko. Same but we're almost there I'd also like to get to know you, said Naruto. Kaneko looks at him with shock you would but haven't you heard of me before I am the school's mascot, said Kaneko in a flat tone. Naruto just raised an eyebrow at the strange title no, not really, said Naruto shocking Kaneko I don't really listen to the rumors around school I find them pointless besides I am focused on my grades and which college to attend to so. I don't really bother keeping up to date with rumors, besides that's a really stupid title, said Naruto Kaneko agreed with Naruto it was a very stupid title to be called. She had also heard a lot from him like how smart and handsome he was she heard many girls talking about his whiskers people even thought both Naruto and Rias were siblings sue to their red hair but that rumor was quickly dispatched as Naruto and Rias had never really talked to each other but people did think Naruto and Sono were going out but that was a rumor going around. But out of all the rumors she was happy that one rumor around him was that he was kind while she was curious about the sacred gear he had she was also curious about him as a person, I'd rather have Naruto senpei than that pervert, thought Kaneko hell if she had to choose between a rock and Issei then she would choose the rock. Kaneko had a hatred for perverts and Issei has a huge pervert the biggest pervert in the world at best she almost felt bad that Sona and her peerage are going to get Issei. We're here, said Naruto drawing Kaneko from her deep thought and she sees it actually it would be nearly impossible to see the building was as big as a hometown buffet store. Kaneko stares at the store with a look of amazement she had never seen a candy store it's big. 
said Kaneko Naruto and Kaneko parked as the two step off of the bike and Naruto clips a lock on both of the helmets he grins at Kaneko who marvels at the store yeah that's the expression of those who first see it and as you can see the store is busy. Said Naruto he turned and sees Kaneko slowly walking towards the store and she's not listening. Thought Naruto he then presses the button on his keys locking the gears on his motorcycle he then walks to buy her if you're amazed by the outside then you'll be amazed within the inside, said Naruto he then feels Kaneko grab hold on his hand. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Kaneko who turned towards him with an expression on conviction come on Naruto senpai I want to see what they have, said Kaneko who begins to walk in fast paced with Naruto having to walk fast to get was also surprised that she was able to drag him he didn't expect such a small girl to have this much strength even her hold on his hand was tight. He then blushes as he realizes he's holding hands with a girl thanks to the speed walking of the petite widenet the two step within the building and marvels at the candy not only is the store filled with various of treats but they even have candy that are human size candy far taller than her short size heaven. Whispered Kaneko this comment caused Naruto giggle Kaneko then grabs a shopping cart and drags Naruto to a large bag of marshmallows the marshmallows themselves were the size of a bowling ball. Kaneko I am only buying you five things so don't go crazy, said Naruto. Kaneko puffed out her cheeks with displeasure fine, pouted Kaneko the people watching them release a loud awe this comment had caused the redhead and whitenet duo to blush Kaneko quickly dumped the marshmallows in the cart she then quickly drags Naruto off but as they got far away from the group she comes to haunt and turns towards the blushing Uzumaki she quickly turned her head around not allowing to her blushing cheeks you drive, demanded Kaneko. Naruto shook his head at her and unfortunately, for her she had never been to this place so she had to rely on Naruto I know something you might like said Naruto he then begins walking causing her to look at him with a curious expression the two then begins to walk by various of snack each of them look delicious she also couldn't believe the shire size of them the two comes to a stop by rice crips tea treats but the box of the rice crips tea treats equaled to the size of four bricks she also noticed these weren't plain they were mixed with chocolate caramel and peanut butter and Naruto watches as she quickly grabs it with remarkable speed she then turned towards him with her yellow eyes gleaming with happiness I want cookies what kind do they have Asked Kaneko who really wanted to eat almost all the treats she saw but she had to fight the urge after all he did say she can only get 5 items. The real question is what they don't have, stated Naruto he then pushes the cart with Kaneko walking next to him he then turned towards her with a curious expression on his face I know you like sweets and rap music but that's about it I don't know what else you like or your family is like. Said Naruto he then quickly noticed the saddened expression within her eyes I take something had happened with your family you don't have to tell me but I know that expression it's the expression of someone you have lost it must be hard, said Naruto. Kaneko turned towards Naruto with a surprise expression who was surprised she had lost her parents and in some case lost her elder sister Kuroko while she was still alive she was a wanted criminal you've lost someone? Asked Kaneko. Naruto nods his head yeah. I understood what it feels like to lose someone but enough of this sad stuff how about you tell me something about yourself something I don't know? Asked Naruto with a smile on his face. I hate perverts, said Kaneko in a flat tone, Naruto snickered at her like that Issei guy? Asked Naruto. She nods her head especially him degenerate lewd cockroach, said Kaneko. Wow. I didn't think I would meet anyone who hates perverts more than Tsunade Bachan, thought Naruto anything else? Asked Naruto. Kaneko nods her head cats, said Kaneko causing Naruto to raise an eyebrow at the comment I love cats, I also like walking around the city, t, I like cartoons and, your bike it's cool, said Kaneko with a blush. Naruto chuckles at this Kaneko then elbows him the ribs causing Naruto to grunt in slight pain I like my bike too. I like many things I especially like going for long walks listening to music, and I like falling to sleep while listening to Yeji while falling to sleep her music is really relaxing. I also like driving around on my bike, said Naruto the two look at all the various of cookies that are in various of sides Kaneko wipes her mouth stop the drool, she couldn't help but to wonder if she was in heaven even though she is a devil to her this store is exactly what she imagined what her personal heaven would be. I can die happy, now, thought Kaneko who had saw chocolate chip. Caramel, s'mores, butterfingers, Hershey's, and mint her yellow eyes then lingered to girls scout cookies. She turned around and her eyes widened with delight the cookies she was staring at her far bigger than her own small hands she was positive that the cookies themselves were at least four times the size of her own hands the cookies have peanut butter cups, roasted marshmallows, white chocolate, and cheesecake her head slowly turned towards the redhead she then points at the cookies what is this? Asked Kaneko with a wide eyed expression on her face. Naruto looks where she's pointing and smiles oh, that. 
asked Naruto Kaneko nods towards in a fast pace that's the Mondo cookies they are very popular you're lucky to even be able to find them Megami had told me they usually run out by 11, said Naruto he watches as a woman begins to grab it but Kaneko grabs it and glares at the woman. Mine. Said Kaneko in a flat tone the woman then backs away from the petite who had a dark aura surrounding her, she wasn't going to let anyone take the candy away from her she didn't care if the lady had been never had it she wasn't going to let anyone take away from her not even Road who she cares deeply for and would sacrifice her life for, her head then turned towards Naruto I want cake Naruto senpei, said Kaneko. Instead of answering her he just pushed the cart with Kaneko following him I take it back, said Naruto causing Kaneko to give him a questionable stare you don't just like sweets you love them said Naruto the only thing Kaneko did was nod their head she had allowed a smile to graze her lips she found herself enjoying his presence more than she originally thought. While her thoughts on her on Naruto the red-haired teen narrowed his eyes as his head felt like someone was ringing bells inside of his head he didn't understand why his head hurt so much he's then forced to shut his eyes due to his vision beginning to blur he didn't understand why this was happening he knew it wasn't a headache or his vision after that strange dream he's been feeling strange it's almost time young Gorgon. Soon you'll understand just hang in there it won't be very long, soon, you'll understand your lineage Gorgon, warned the strange voice. Before he can even question the strange voice Kaneko pokes his arm he turned towards her who pointing at the cakes are you okay Naruto senpei you like you were in deep thought. Asked a curious Kaneko I wondered could it be his sacred gear thought Kaneko Naruto nods his head with a fake smile he's lying, thought Kaneko. The two walk over to the cake section now remember this will be your fourth item but all these cakes taste good anything you pick would be perfect, said Naruto while he didn't taste everyone one of these cakes but he trusted Megami to not make a bad cake. You pick. Which one is your favorite? Asked the white Annette. Naruto grins in response well that's easy it's got to be the French white chocolate cheesecake, said Naruto. I don't know what it is but I want it, said Kaneko in a tone with conviction she then searched for the cake leaving Naruto alone with the cart it didn't take the white Annette that long to find she then sees something reaching it she then easily snatched it for herself she turned towards the person and sees a small little girl instead of giving the cake to the small cart she walked towards Naruto leaving the girl flabbergasted who had thought the small teen would give the cake to their child. Kaneko then turned towards Naruto where to next? asked the young girl. How about some brownies? asked Naruto her only response was a nod of the head okay. Then follow me, said Naruto and follow him the two then walk towards the opposite direction and the white Annette couldn't help but to feel like a complete idiot that she didn't notice brownies were there she looks down in embarrassment Naruto smiles at her at least she's showing herself she definitely looks better with a smile than that emotionless mask she wears I wondered what happened to her. Thought Naruto but he knew the girl wasn't ready to talk about it and he was fine with that Naruto then picks up a box of brownies on the box red recess and Hershey brownies trust me these are awesome, said Naruto the two then head to the checkout counter. Are you taking taking me home after this? asked Kaneko who sounded sad this didn't go unnoticed by Naruto. He shook his head negatively no, I thought we would go to a cafe after this how does that sound? asked Naruto. Kaneko smiles at him id like that said Kaneko who was feeling quite happy with herself she had accepted his invitation she also hoped today was going to be slow. Next day the young Uzumaki can be seen at the library within the library Naruto is reading the Jurassic Park book he had always wanted to read the book after he heard the movie was based off of the book. While he was reading his book his mind then begins to linger towards his date with Kaneko she was an interesting person nothing like the rest including Sona he didn't want to just to get to know her but he also wanted to help her it was clear as she is suffering he knew it had to do something with the past he just wasn't sure what it was but he wanted to help her but his thoughts then comes to a halt when he feels like poke him he ignores it hopping the person will leave him be after the person poked him two more times he turned his head and sees a beautiful ravenette who looks very shy he raised an eyebrow at the female. Hh hi my nn name is Yuma Amano, said the ravenette who's staring at Naruto with a heavy blush across her cheeks. Yuma is an attractive young woman with violet eyes having a slender body, she had long silky black hair down to her hips, her clothing consisted of a short black dress with a small, light purple jacket on top, and she wears purple flat shoes. Um, hi I am Naruto Uzumaki do I know you? Asked Naruto with a raised eyebrow the girl didn't seem too familiar then again he doesn't really pay the people from school any mind except Kaneko and Sona but this girl he wasn't sure if he actually met her the only female talking to besides Sona as a Kano. He watches as Yuma shakes her negatively no, you don't bit I've seen you around and I think why why you're cute, I wanted to know will you go out with me? Asked Yuma with her face becoming crimson red. Naruto eyes went wide with shock at the female's claim that was something he wasn't expecting actually he didn't know what to expect from the female Naruto then rubbed the back of his head in a nervous manner um, you are attractive, 
said Naruto Yuma beams at this his eyes then turns away and a glint enters her eyes he then turned back to her and the glint is gone but I can't just go out with you, said Naruto. Yuma gains a saddened expression but mentally she narrowed her eyes and why won't you go out with me? asked Yuma in a fake curious tone. Well the thing is I don't know you, I can't just date someone who I don't know, and I am busy trying to do good in school and look for colleges, stated Naruto hoping the female would understand his reasoning he knew other men would just be like forget about school and date Yuma but he wasn't one of those type of people. So, he isn't a pervert like that Issei guy Kalawarner had killed and he seems more focused on his future he won't have to worry for his future for very long. Thought Yuma she then smiles brightly at Naruto she then grabs hold on his hand then how about we get to know each other you said you want date someone you don't know then it'll become you do know and then I can call you my boyfriend tomorrow after school it'll meet you at the student parking lot we're going to have so much fun tomorrow and here's my number, said Yuma handing Naruto a piece of paper before he even have a chance to reject her request she vanished from his sight. Well damn, she can move when she wants, but who the hell is she? Thought Naruto he then goes back to reading a book but he can't help but to wonder why these women are getting involved in his life first Sona, then Kaneko and now this Yuma character but unfortunately for him he was unsure they truly were but Naruto was thankful his head wasn't hurting and he didn't hear that strange voice in his head, but I should hurry up and get to my clinic no doubt they need help, thought Naruto who's now focus on the people he had helped for many years. The next day school went by fast nothing special happened except for the Issei and his friends being beaten with an inch of their life but that wasn't new. Naruto walks past the blushing females that stare at him but he ignores the girls and his eyes set on Yuma who appears to be wearing a school uniform her school uniform, which consisted of a dark red jacket with the letter P embroidered in gold, a white undershirt, a red bow, and a green skirt with a thin white strip around the lower end of it. Okay, that's probably why I've never seen her but even her uniform doesn't look familiar thought Naruto. She smiles at him with a bright smile hi Naruto-kun I thought I would have to start looking for you, stated Yuma with a fake pout. He then rubbed the back of his neck you want need to do that, so, where are we going? wondered Naruto while he may have been on a date on Saturday he only knew where to take the whitenet due to him knowing her love for sweets but here he has no idea what Yuma interests are. She then grabs hold on his hand causing him to blush in surprise how about a zoo it's been so long since I've been there and it seems like a good choice so we can get to know each other, said Yuma she then released her hold if his hand she then hops on his bike Naruto then takes out an extra helmet at which Yuma puts it on well, what are you waiting for slow poke? wondered Yuma. R R right, let's go, said Naruto he then puts on his own helmet drives off and the red haired teen didn't notice Akano and Tsubaki watching from afar. Yuma smiles to herself well this was easy but I must admit riding on this bike is fun, but I have a mission, thought the young female teen, the two made it to the zoo at which Yuma smiled at she grabs his hand and the two enter inside of the zoo as the two walk by multiple cages she stops when she saw a flock of peacocks her eyes shine at the large birds. Naruto drugs his hands in his pockets and grins at her I take it you like them? asked Naruto in a curious tone but it was clear as day how much she liked the colorful birds. Yuma nods her head yeah. I do there so pretty come on I want to see the other birds, said Yuma dragging Naruto by the hand with a smile not a fake one but a true 100 watt smile her eyes shined even brighter as she stares at the owls they're so lucky, said Yuma Naruto turned towards her they are free birds allowed to go anywhere they want, said Yuma. Yeah, I guess you're right Yuma, said Naruto, she then turned towards him with a pout Naruto raised an eyebrow at her call me, Yuma Chan, said Yuma staring at the teen who's taller than her. Naruto rolled his eyes at the sweet girl how about we get some crepes instead, advised Naruto he wasn't going to call her Yuma-chan after all he hasn't called Sona-Sona-chan. K. exclaimed Yuma she then grabs hold of Naruto hands after the two bout the crepes they began walking around staring at the tigers. Turtles, wolves, hyenas, and rhinos the two then stopped at a cage containing a family of anaconda each of the snakes star at Naruto with a curious gaze he then begins to hear voices not from the other person or within his mind but from the snakes his blue colored eyes then changed into green serpent like eyes his crepe falls to the ground no sooner does Naruto's legs give out on him causing him crashing to the ground. R R right, let's go said Naruto he then puts on his own helmet drives off and the red haired teen didn't notice Akano and Tsubaki watching from afar. Yuma smiles to herself well this was easy but I must admit riding on this bike is fun, but I have a mission, thought the young female teen, the two made it to the zoo at which Yuma smiled at she grabs his hand and the two enter inside of the zoo as the two walks by multiple cages she stops when she saw a flock of peacocks her eyes shine at the large birds. Naruto drugs his hands in his pockets and grins at her I take it do you like them? 
asked Naruto in a curious tone but it was clear as day how much she liked the colorful birds. Yuma nods her head yeah. I do there so pretty come on I want to see the other birds, said Yuma dragging Naruto by the hand with a smile, not a fake one but a true 100 watt smile her eyes shined even brighter as she stares at the owls they're so lucky, said Yuma Naruto turned towards her they are free birds allowed to go anywhere they want, said Yuma. Yeah, I guess you're right Yuma, said Naruto. She then turned towards him with a pout Naruto raised an eyebrow at her call me, Yuma-chan, said Yuma staring at the teen who's taller than her. Naruto rolled his eyes at the sweet girl how about we get some crepes instead, advised Naruto he wasn't going to call her Yuma-chan after all he hasn't called Sona-Sona-chan. K. exclaimed Yuma she then grabs hold of Naruto hands after the two bouts the crepes they began walking around staring at the tigers. Turtles, wolves, hyenas, and rhinos the two then stopped at a cage containing a family of anaconda each of the snakes stars at Naruto with a curious gaze he then begins to hear voices not from the other person or within his mind but from the snakes, his blue colored eyes then changed into green serpent like eyes his crepe falls to the ground no sooner does Naruto's legs give out on him causing him crashing to the ground. You have awakened young Gorgon, said the voice Naruto didn't hear due to everything around him feeling fussy. Recap nt that voice who was that? Where am I? wondered Naruto who surrounded by darkness the last thing he could remember was the voices of the snakes at the zoo but that made no sense this wasn't Harry Potter and people should nt be able to talk to animals. And it was that strange voice he keeps hearing once in his dream and now at the zoo it said Gorgon? What the hell did it mean? thought Naruto but there was also something else that was bothering him the strange feeling his scalp he struggles to open his eyes after a few seconds of attempting to open his eyes once he finally has been able to open his eyes, his cerulean colored eyes open as wide due to the fact he's laying on Yuma's lap with her large size breast in his view he turns his head to the side avoiding to look at her breast wh what are you doing? stuttered Naruto as he can feel her hand run through his spiky locks. Yuma giggles at Naruto your hair is very smooth Naruto kun. Smiled Yuma she didn't know but she couldn't help herself stroking his hair she then runs her hand over his whiskers she then giggles at the young teen purring what the hell? Why the fuck am I giggling like a fucking schoolgirl? I am a fallen angel. Thought Yuma she then gains a fake smile you're just like a cute fox Naruto kun, beamed Yuma. Naruto blushes even harder he attempts to get up but finds himself losing his balance Yuma quickly grabs hold of Naruto the redhead turns to the beautiful ravenette how long was I out? Asked Naruto. About an hour, said Yuma his eyes went wide she then smiles sweetly at him how about I take you home? Asked Yuma Naruto nods his head the one good thing about this human is that he isn't a pervert I really got lucky being assigned to him sorry Kalawarner but there's no way in hell I am going to pretend to be Issei's boyfriend, thought Yuma while she and Kalawarner were friends she did not want deal with Issei staring at her breast every 5 seconds. Sometime later the two finds themselves in front of the Uzumaki residence after hearing a knock Kashina makes her way to the door as she opens it she sees her teenaged son and a black haired teen most mothers would be glad their son arrived home with a beautiful woman but Kashina had another thought running through her head homewrecker. Roared Kashina she then grabs Naruto bringing him to her side what have you done to my son? You she devil. I won't let you ruin my Naruto's life Datbeo, exclaimed Kashina baring her fangs at Yuma. Yuma sweat drop at the overprotected mother that was a response she wasn't expecting she didn't do anything I collapse and she took me home, said Naruto Kashina quickly turns to her son staring into his blue eyes ka chan I am fine she's a good person, said Naruto Kashina turns towards Yuma glaring at the young female teen with eyes of a lioness. Yuma stares in shock as Naruto had called her a good person it seems it has been forever anyone has ever called her good when was the last time someone had called me good? thought Yuma she honestly didn't know why she even cared about this boy complimenting her it made no sense to her she had always been looking out for herself. Kashina glares at Yuma her crimson hair begins to move in an ominous manner reflecting her angry emotion is what Naruto saying true, growled Kashina in a tone that promises nothing but pain. Why yes I saw him collapse and helped him back here, says Yuma Kashina continues to glare at the ravenette female she didn't know how but the human was quite intimidating why the hell does I feel the need to plead my case? thought Yuma she's a fallen angel who always faced constant death but this woman was intimidating her. She then glances back at her son then back at Yuma fine, you can take my son to his room but, if you try to defile my Naru Chan I'll skin you alive and use the remains to make a new broom, growled Kashina. Naruto blushes in embarrassment just take me to my room, mutters Naruto he honestly wishes his mother wasn't as protective as she was Tsunade wasn't even this protective of him. Yuma nods her and helps the tattooed teen upstairs the black haired girl sighs as she feels Kashina's eyes glaring at her back sorry, she's a little protective of me, 
mutters Naruto with a heavy sigh. A little? That's an understatement this woman is possessive of him. Thought Yuma she then smiles at him it's okay. Says Yuma as they enter his room she notices his room was neat even the bookshelf was organized she looks around sees a photo of a young Naruto and his parents she saw his mother but she didn't see or sense his father. She looks at Naruto how has his arm covering his face where's your dad I didn't see or hear him, is he at work? Asked a curious Yuma she quickly notices how stiff he became it would be impossible not to notice how fast his hand tightened. Accident, says Naruto it was clear he didn't want to talk about it Yuma guessed she could have figured that on her own. He always talks about his mother but never brings up his father she guesses he wasn't so perfect after all, her eyes then narrowed well that explains why his mother is like this, thought Yuma even when this new information still makes her target better than that Isil. Naruto smiles at her thank you, for today, Yuma I just you don't tell anyone this, it's a memory I can't forget, says Naruto his eyes turn hollow shocking her there the human goes complimenting her and of course he wasn't talking about her looks but her personality or to be more precise the fake Yuma. Out of instinct, she pats his head her purple colored eyes stare in amazement at how soft his red hair is she lets out a sigh what the hell am I doing? Mutters Yuma she looks down at Naruto and noticing he's asleep a cold runs through her she looks back at the door lets out an audible gulp Kashina stares at her with burning fury. Before she can even get a word Kashina grabs her by the face and lifts her up with one hand shocking Yuma of the woman's monster strength and stay out she devil, yelled Kashina as she literally threw Yuma out of the house. As Naruto dreams, he finds him completely in total darkness suddenly a black and gold serpent with crimson horns appears in front of him he can clearly see his teeth and they would be better suited for a dragon ah, we meet at last my partner, grinned the serpent showing his dragonic fangs. Wwh what are you? asked Naruto his eyes widened he heard this voice before. Ah, finally recognized me, eh? Took you long enough. I am a sacred gear a gift from God, for now, you can call me world eater, Warudoita. For now, says Warudoita suddenly Naruto has pushed out the mindscape he wakes up in his room while he is a logical person whatever is going on with him can't possibly he realistically explain. He releases a loud groan this had only given him a reason to search for the answers with feeling more frustrated he buries himself under the covers the next day Naruto is at the table nearly finished with his breakfast he doesn't even pay attention to the knocking on the door, when Kashina opened the door and glares at the smiling Yuma what do you want? demanded Kashina. Yuma stares at her with a sweat drop on the side of her save Kami, this woman is relentless. Thought Yuma she smiles at the mother I wanted to walk to school with him, says Yuma. Kashina stares at her with a suspicious glare tisk, wait here, said Kashina slamming the door on her Yuma stares at the door with a dumbstruck look Naruto, that girl is here, exclaims Kashina. She doesn't even bother to remember my name. Though Yuma the door once again opens she smiles as she sees Naruto carry his motorcycle helmet morning Naruto-kun, says Yuma hoping to get to ride his bike. Morning you Kaniko? exclaimed Naruto in shock, Kaniko. Replied a confused Yuma she turns her head and sees the petite whitenette both fallen angel and devil stare at each other with a dumbfounded look what the fuck is she doing here? Thought Yuma she quickly shakes off the utter shock and replaces it with a fake smile who are you, underclassmen? asked Yuma. Kaniko stares at her with a blank look but inside she was freaking out Kaniko, I want to go to school with Naruto, says Kaniko. I am Yuma, I am sorry but Naruto-kun and I are going to school together, says Yuma both girls stare at each other. Naruto sighs at the bickering of the two girls well, we can't all ride my bike, says Naruto both girls turn to him with a twinkle in their eyes, ah, uh, me and my big mouth, grumbled Naruto, instead of taking his bike they walk to school with each girl holding on each arm he sighs as he feels numerous angry eyes on him. First Kaniko-sama, and now this hot chick, grumbled a boy. Another boy cries tears of anger damn pretty, groans a teen. Uzumaki is so lucky, says a teen, no fair, I want Kaniko to hold me like that, a boy. This is so bullshit, yelled a teen, ill die for you Kaniko-chan, yells a fanboy. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea, mutters Naruto as he's everyone's main target of interest throughout the whole day and every period everyone stares at him by the third period most of the students knew about Yuma and Kaniko clinging to him. With the final bell, he leaves the room and groans tiredly don't worry Naruto, this your last year, thought Naruto the sooner he graduates the sooner he doesn't have to deal with the idiots of the school, outside of the school, he sees a patient Yuma waiting for him Yuma. What are you doing here? asked a surprised Naruto many of the open-minded boys stares at her breasts. She pouts at him I told you to call me Yuma-chan, and I wanted to walk home with you, 
says Yuma Naruto didn't get to say anything as she leads him into town clinging to his arm causing Naruto to blush from afar a pouting Kaneko watches in dissatisfaction. Yuma smiles brightly at the red-haired teen let's go eat, says Yuma. But I was going to study, says Naruto he also purposely left the fact that he goes to this homeless spot to help people. Yuma pouts at him but I wanna have fun, exclaims Yuma he sighs in defeat she brightens at this snuggles against his arm with a calm look many of the adults look the two in awe and mistaking them for a couple. Yuma looks up at Naruto your mom doesn't like me, states Yuma. I think she's starting to warm up to I mean when she saw you at the door she didn't just slam the door on you so, that's something, it could have been worse, says Naruto. Really? asked Yuma blinking at him in a cutesy manner. Naruto nods his head she could have used her bat, says Naruto Yuma shivers at the thought of the female redhead the woman could easily lift her up with one hand and she didn't want to test the theory out, Naruto lets out a low chuckle yeah, she's pretty strong, says Naruto. Yuma releases a low chuckle well, that's an understatement of the century that woman is probably a descendant of a devil. I wouldn't be surprised if that monster fought a bear just for the shits and giggles. Thought Yuma she mentally lets out a sigh ah, uh, what the hell am I doing playing the good girl? I need to hurry up. Thought Yuma as the two enter the small restaurant that sells hot plates she smiles at Naruto this place is really good. Trust me Naruto kun you'll like it, says Yuma as they sat down she orders a beef hot place and Naruto orders an order of salmon it took a while for them to get their order, once they finally got their food she watches as he cooks his meat once it's cooked right he eats it Yuma chuckles at the glint in his eyes ehehe, told you, giggled Yuma she then stops her giggling as she hears munching she turns her head and sees Kaneko munching on her second serving. How long have you been there? asked Yuma, the short teenagers takes a bite of steak a few minutes, says Kaneko unknown to both human and fallen angel she had been tailing them since they left school not even Rias knows that she is here for some reason she didn't like how Yuma clung on to him maybe it was because she knew who she was, of course, it could have been because he was the only one that actually treated her like a normal person she blushes at the thought of her time with Naruto. Yuma's eyebrow twitched in annoyance at the girl what the hell she's been here the whole time. How the fuck did I not notice? It's okay, just need to play it cool, thought Yuma she continues to eat the food she then stops eating as she feels Kaneko staring at her what? asked Yuma. I wanna sit next to Naruto, says Kaneko, but I am sitting here, says Yuma. Don't care I want to sit there, states Kaneko, the two females glare at each if you look closer you can see electricity in both their eyes as they have a stare down Naruto turns to Yuma sighs loudly let Kaneko sit there I don't see a problem with it says Naruto Yuma pouts at him and rises to her feet, as both Yuma and Kaneko glare at her, she holds up a peace sign which greatly angers her with Kaneko now sitting next to Naruto she stares at him with an innocent look he smiles down at her how was your day? asked Naruto. Good, but math, is evil, says Kaneko, well, I can help you if you want? asks Naruto Kaneko nods her head at a rapid pace causing him to smile Yuma stares at Kaneko with an irritated look, maybe the people from school aren't so bad, thought Naruto after three more servings he was full of each of the students bellies full they pay for their own bill Naruto then decides to walk her home and Kaneko decides to tag along not trusting the busty woman. Even as they left the two continue to glare each other Naruto can't help but wonder when the two will stop glaring at each other, incoming partner, yells Warutoita deciding to listen to his sacred gear he tackles both girls to the ground and narrowly dodging the spear that was thrown at them. What the hell was? exclaimed a confused Naruto, that would be me, little human says Donaseek Naruto looks up in the night sky and sees Donaseek flying the fallen angel chuckles at the teen he turns to Yuma I see you took your time Rainer, no matter ill kill this brat and the devil bitch, grinned the fallen angel. He chucks the blue light spear at Naruto but his left arm glows purple revealing an armored scaled snake head the armored gauntlet is black and purple with four crimson colored horns protruding from the head the eyes are colored a metallic maroon on the top of its head is a small gold colored gem the snake mouth opens up and swallows the light spear shocking the supernatural people stare in shock whwh what the hell? Is this my arm? exclaimed a confused Naruto if the fallen angel wasn't strange enough then his arm transforming was just straight up confusing. The fallen angel charges at him with blinding speed and appears in front of him and backhanded slaps him which tosses him against a tree don't get ahead of yourself. You're still just a pathetic human. Gloats Donaseek he creates another light spear but before he could he throw the weapon he's punched in the gut by Kaneko Rainer throws a light spear at his shoulder which had tossed him through a tree. While he's distracted extend your arm out and say Hydra Flash, Hadasha, says the serpent. Right, Hydra Flash, Hadasha exclaims Naruto the snakehead opens up and fires a purple shot that hits Donaseek in the chest. 
The fallen angel grabs his chest in pain damn it that sacred gear can absorb energy and release it back even stronger, I need to kill him now, thought Donasik he knocks both girls to the side each girl runs it after him as he creates a huge spear. Rainer throws several light spears at him but Donasik doesn't even seem interested at the fact the spears had pierced him he glares at Naruto with a bloodthirsty grin, Naruto's blue eyes then morphed into green snake like eyes suddenly Donasik turns to stone before their very eyes, what the hell just happened? Why does Yuma have wings? What the fuck is going on? Yells Naruto he turns to the girls wanting some answers. Both girls sigh knowing they can't lie their way out of the situation especially when Naruto had just awakened his sacred gear and turned Donasik to stone, Kaneko lets out a defeated sigh and her black leather wings sprouts from her back I am a devil and she's a fallen angel, says Kaneko. Uh, right and thing? Asked Naruto pointing to his arm. That is a sacred gear which is known as God's artifacts or items with powerful abilities bestowed upon humans by God of the Bible and you possess a Longinus which are unique top tier sacred gears, each having multiple abilities compared to a normal sacred gear which only has one, and has the power to slay gods, this class of sacred gears is also known as the tool that destroys God, there are 13 Longinus in total, says Rainer. Naruto scratches the back of his head in confusing so. Um these gear sacred or powerful items sealed in people's body by God, replied Naruto both girls nod their heads Naruto's eyes turn to Rainer wait a minute he called you Rainer, who are you? questioned the red haired human. Rainer sighs loudly her whole body glows brightly she then looks far more mature and wearing revealing leather clothes even her face looked completely sexual she then uses her wings to left her off a few feet from the ground my real name is Rainer and what the midget said is true I am a fallen angel just like Donasik here says Rainer pointing down at the broken pieces of Donasik. Kaneko looks down at herself with an annoyed look she then points at Rainer she was ordered to kill you, says Kaneko leaving Naruto and Rainer she was more shocked that the little girl would straight up snitch on her. Naruto turns to her is that true? asked Naruto, yes, but that was before I can't possibly return back they'll kill me, says Rainer. Okay, bye, says Kaneko coldly, Rainer grits her teeth in annoyance fuck off the stupid cat, yelled Rainer. Dirty turkey. Insulted Kaneko narrowing her eyes at Rainer. Dwarf. Yelled Rainer. Kaneko's eyebrow twitches cow utters, growled Kaneko. Rainer looks as if someone had just kicked her dog she then grins mischievously she then begins to play with her large breast causing Naruto's face to turn a deep scarlet Kaneko pouts in annoyance jealous brat. Don't worry I am sure someday you'll grow out of your training bra. Don't worry it'll keep Naruto kun warm says Rainer she turns and winks at Naruto this had only turned him into a stuttering mess. Grandma boobs, says an angry Kaneko, Rainer then pokes Kaneko in the face causing her to step back now, listen here middle schooler uh, just stop, exclaims Naruto causing the two girls to stop their insult match, he then rubs his eyes I just almost got killed tonight and I am going home, says Naruto. Rainer flies above him ill walk home with you, says Rainer. Kaneko appears by his side and grabs hold of his hand no, I will flying turkey, insulted Kaneko. As the two glare at each other Naruto lets out a sigh he had no idea what he got himself involved with but it would be nothing like his current life. Two days have passed since the Donasik thing he had seemed like everything had started to go back to normal but Naruto would often practice with Warudoida, he also hadn't seen Rainer or Kaneko which shocked him but just like every other morning Naruto is eating his mom's homemade waffles and french toast the duo then hears the doorbell Kashina opens to the door and stares at the whitenet with a curious look and are you? asked Kashina she had to admit it this girl is pretty cute. I am Kaneko Taju Naruto Senpei's underclassman, says Kaneko. Kashina narrows her eyes at Kaneko come in, said Kashina in a wary tone Kaneko just nods her head and follows the mother. She followed Kashina to the kitchen where Naruto is eating she smiles at him Naruto do you know this girl? Asked Kashina. Naruto turns to his mother and stares in shock why why yeah she's my underclassman, says Naruto. Kashina hums to herself she then places her hand on Kaneko's head fine, ill allow this friendship but if you try to play patty cake with my son ill skin your ass alive and pour pounds of salt on you, threatened Kashina Kaneko shivers in fear. Later that evening Naruto had just finished with his last patient with everyone leaving heading to a new location to sleep, Naruto had just finished putting away the medicine with a loud sound of a bang Naruto grabs his shoulder in pain as he was just shot Kukakuku, take that you stupid brat, grinned Freed he then shots Naruto several times causing the boy to scream in pain. Freed then appears in front of him and gives him a left punch with Naruto laying on the ground Freed stomps on his face, ah ha ha, now die, filthy devil, lover. 
Yells freed stabbing Naruto in the gut causing him to throw up blood I can't believe Donisik let this talentless brat kill him. Laughed the insane man. As the man vanished in the night Naruto begins to cry I don't want to die. It'll just make mom sad. There's still so much I want to do. Cried Naruto he then begins to coughing blood his vision then becomes hazy suddenly a red magic circle appears but his eyes were already closed he then hears someone calling out his name that sounds like Kaneko, mumbled Kaneko. Kaneko rushes over to Naruto cradling his head on her lap Rias Bucko we were too late, cried a saddened Kaneko. Rias stares at Kaneko in shock she wasn't expecting to get such a reaction from Kaneko she knew her petite friend she knew what she had to do. From what Kaneko had told her has a powerful sacred gear so she knew one pawn wouldn't work so she used all her pawn pieces turning him into a devil. Time skip the next morning Naruto groans in pain his eyes then open wide as he realizes he's awake in his bed and not dead he also quickly realized that someone else in his bed he turns and stares into the eyes of a nude Rias who has a sly grin he then grabs her by the shoulders she raises an eyebrow at him you gotta get the hell out girl, says Naruto. She stares at him in shock my name is Rias Gremory and I am part of I don't car you gotta leave now, says Naruto getting up from the bed and puts some pants. He then shoves her clothes Rias lap she pouts at her fellow redhead well that's, says Rias. Is that a girl I hear? growled Kashina, as she steps closer and closer to the door, begins to freak out he knew if his mother found this girl in his room she would kill them both sure this redhead girl but that wouldn't stop his mother no this will only encourage to create new ways for Kashina to kill this Rias girl. Seeing no other real option he shoves her out the window she stares shocked not believing she has just pushed out the window Kaneko had told her about his mom she thought Kaneko was just joking about how protective she is of Naruto. Kashina comes barging in his room wielding a bat where is she? Asked Kashina looking around his room. He watches as she looks under the bed she looks at the ceiling ah, who? Lied Naruto. I heard a girl says Kashina she looking through his closet she narrows her eyes and looks out of the window but she didn't see anyone. I know I heard someone, exclaims Kashina. Mom, no one here, can you please put the bat down, pleads Naruto. She lets out a sigh she then hugs Naruto fine, get ready for school, says Kashina she then lets out a defeated sigh I could have sworn I heard a girl's voice, but don't you worry Naru chan it will protect you from those horning teenage harlots. I won't allow any of those girls ruin my son's future, exclaimed Kashina. Sometime during lunch, Naruto buries his head at his desk he soon came to realize ever since he into Kaneko his life had been becoming a clusterfuck just who the hell was that girl. Thought Naruto maybe if he just closed his eyes but that doesn't seem to be working as he hears the other students begin whispering among themselves he then released a sigh as he feels someone, someone tapping his shoulder he turns and sees Rias Gremory standing before him crap, it's that weird girl. Thought Naruto. Rias smiles at him in a friendly manner can we talk? Asked Rias Naruto just nods his head. As they exit the classroom Naruto turns to her with a bow I am sorry pushing out the window miss, apologize Naruto. It's okay. Kaneko chan told me how aggressive your mom can be, says Rias she then smiles at him by the way my name is Rias Gremory, says Rias Naruto nods his head but that doesn't mean he doesn't feel guilty about pushing her out of a window. He then turns to her with a confused expression so, um Rias where are we going? Asked the tattoo teen he then glances at a few students and notices the males of school look at him with jealousy he turns away from them and turns to his fellow redhead he notices the smile she's wearing seems to be forced which confuses him greatly. To my clubroom of course, you do have some questions? Asked Rias all Naruto could do was a nod his head, later that day Naruto rubs eyes and drinks the coffee made by Akano ever she had told him about the war and the system of the devil pieces Naruto looks as if his brain had been a short circuited I know this can be overwhelming, says Rias. Overwhelming isn't the word I would use, thought Naruto sitting next as Kaneko who is stuffing her face she then offers him a piece of cake which he gladly accepts the dessert he then glares at Rias how do know I can trust you? From what you said these other devils treat their um, peerage like slaves how can I trust you want to the same? Questioned Naruto. She can understand why he seems so on edge many of her friends had acted the same when she resurrected them into devils I can assure you the Gremory clan treats their peerage as family, says Rias. Naruto still looks uncertain about joining this girl peerage and being involved in a war that lasted for many decades he also didn't like the idea of being someone's slave. Kaneko turns to him and smiles Naruto smiles back at her you said the fallen angels are after me because what's sealed in me right? Asked Naruto Rias nods her head while Akano and Kiba looked at Naruto with a curious gaze Rias nods her head then would they to go after my mom to get to me? Asked Naruto with a serious look. Yes, I wouldn't put it pasted them to go after your mom. 
You may have killed Donacy, but without proper training, you stand no match, says Rias. He would rather leave this room and pretend this meeting never happened but he knew these fallen angels won't give up anytime soon he also couldn't allow his mom to get involved in this, ah, uh, fine but I won't join your club I am busy with other things, says Naruto Rias smiles at this he then rises to his feet and glares at her but if you start treating me like a slave it'll end you, threatened Naruto. As he leaves the room Akano snickers she then turns to her best friend we've got an interesting little pawn, joked Akano with a blush. Just as Naruto gets ready to mount his bike he's tackled by Rainer Naruto-kun I miss you, exclaimed Rainer she nuzzles against him, Naruto pats her on the back where you been? Asked Naruto, looking for a new base. I couldn't go back to the old one, says Rainer, thanks for watching.